Asalaamu As Alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. So we'll continue our reading of Thomas Hobbes, the main man. Main man. Very interesting guy. I really do think that reading him gives you just so much insight to how the English words were spelled back then. I don't know, it's kind of nerdy because I can still read it, but you like you can see like less is spelled instead of being L-E-S-S, -S, it's L-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, right? And you're like, we don't spell it like that anymore, but it's really cool. Like compare Hobbes' English to Shakespearean English and then like, I don't know, a mumble rapper today, like Cardi B or something, and you're like, look how like the language is getting stupider as we <laughs> go forward. And reading this is going to help you to understand legal contracts, complicated language, because you may be texting your friends with like just two or three words, right? Like, by the way, is B-T-W, like you may do that, but when you go to buy a car, or you take a bank, uh, open a bank account or something like that, you're going to have more complicated language. And if you don't understand, you're going to kind of be taken for a ride. And you won't understand sophistry as well. So these kinds of books are good for, you know, historians and nerds and other such factors. But you get more comfortable with different types of language. You should not surround yourself with people who use fifth grade language all the time and don't push themselves to understand higher, you know, rhetoric. So let's begin, okay? We're in part one, chapter X. All right, let's begin. To give way or place to another in any commodity is to honor, being a confession of greater power. To arrogate is to dishonor. So to give way or place to another with concerning a commodity that's a so you're bestowing an honor upon that person being a confession of great power that one sounds really interesting right to shew any sign of love or fear of another is to honor for both to love and fear is to value to shew a sign of love to shew it hmm kind of like not overly say and see like, oh, I like what you're doing, you know, keep coming to fear, not to show fear. This is interesting. Maybe that could apply if there's like a very formidable, let's, you know, that gives you the example when Caesar went in front of Sulla. Sulla had, you know, took out a lot of political rivals and Caesar bravely went there and told Sulla to his face, no, I'm not going to divorce my wife. And Sulla was like, okay, well, I want your heart, you know, I'm going to have you executed. And Caesar escaped and was captured by pirates. But he didn't show fear. So he honored Sulla, even though Sulla was like, hey, I kind of want you dead, you know? So really makes you think, right? To condemn or less to love or fear, then he expects is to dishonor, for it is undervaluing. Ooh. To praise, magnify... Like magnify is not spelled M-A-G-N-I-F-Y. Magnify, it's spelled M-A-G-N-I-F-I-E. Right? Very interesting. Or call happy. So to praise, magnify, or call happy is to honor. Because nothing but goodness, power, and felicity is valued. To revile, mock, or pity is to dishonor. Uh-huh. So you're mocking, we're dishonoring. But notice this aspect here of pity. So... Pity versus magnify. You magnify it, you're honoring it. You pity it, you're dishonoring it. That's interesting, right? To speak to another with consideration, to appear before him with decency and humility is to honor him as signs of fear to offend, to speak to him rashly, to do anything before him obscenely, sovereignly, impudently is to dishonor. Impudent! Uh, like you always see those kind of cartoons where they're like impotent swine, you know, and the king's like mad at somebody who's come to ask for something. It kind of reminds me of that. To believe, to trust, to rely on another is to honor him. Yes, if you're trusting them and believing them, you're showing them a sign of honor that you testify to their character and their merits, right? Sign of opinion of his virtue and power. See, virtue isn't V-I-R-T-U-E. It's spelled V-E-R-T-U-E, right? That's cool. 
To distress or not believe is to dishonor. To hearken to a man's counsel or discourse of what kind soever is to honor. So to hearken to a man's counsel. You hearken is like you're really paying attention. Like, hmm, let's listen to what he's saying here, right? Wow. And their discourse. So to hearken to his discourse as well. They're talking. You come up and you want to listen attentively. You're, you're hearkening to it. You're giving them a sign of honor, right? You're paying attention to them. As a sign, we think him wise or eloquent or witty to sleep or go forth or talk the while is to dishonor. Yeah, if you're talking while they're, you know, conversing or are discussing a council issue and you're not paying attention, you're having your own side conversation, yes, most definitely can be seen as a sign that you're like, pay attention, right? Like if you're in the classroom, right, and your professor is talking and you're having a side conversation with someone, obviously the teacher is going to be like, can I have your attention, please? You see? He has a point, right? To do those things to another, which he takes for signs of honor, or which the law or custom makes so, is to honor. Okay, so if you're doing what the laws are or the customs are that show honor and you're doing it, that's a sign that you're honoring them. So if you're going in front of a monarch, you're an ambassador, and you're supposed to bow down before the monarch, let's say you're in the 16th century, before you begin speaking, uh, that would be the custom of the land, and you do it, you're showing a sign of honor, right? As long as you're not degrading yourself, like Caligula of Rome, he would dishonor people when they came, humiliate them, right? Do something weird. Like imagine a king who you come to see him, he doesn't like what you say, and then he, you know, pours wine on you or does something, he's dishonoring you, even though you showed him honor. It's like, okay, you did what you were supposed to, now you hurt me. So, if the king makes you do something dishonorable to honor him, it makes you dishonor yourself. So there's also that aspect as well that you can think about when it comes to what customs you should obey when seeking to show honor to someone else in a position of authority. Because in approving the honor done by others, he acknowledged the power which others acknowledge. Acknowledging the power which others acknowledge. Think about that. So this is a big point. What's an example of that? A queen says, bend the knee. Everyone who's come before has bent it. And let's say he says, no. Okay, now you have di you're not recognizing the, the power. You're not acknowledging it as others have. You've dishonored me because you're not within the norm and custom and the law. You see? To refuse to do them is to dishonor. Yeah, exactly. So you got to be careful. Yeah, be careful who you go in front of. To agree with an opinion is to honor as being a sign of approving his judgment and wisdom. See, wisdom is not W-I-S-D-O-M. It's W-I-S-D-O-M-E. <laughs> Why is the E there? To dissent is dishonor. I mean, yeah, I mean, we can pretty much get that. But he had the controversial opinion about flattery, which I disagree with, because I think if you want to agree with the opinion, agree with it. But disagreeing, it, 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 one could argue semantics about if you disagree, you're showing honor to truth itself, and you're honoring that person's intelligence to show them a correction, depending, you know, how it all lays out. Dissent is not exactly dishonor, but you could be honoring something higher, which is truth, which will make that person better. So we could argue with Hobbes on that. I mean, they can see dissent as a dishonor for sure, right? Like, I told everyone had to wear a pink hat, and they didn't wear a pink hat. You're dishonoring my rules, right? Something, you know, absurd. And upbraiding of error, and if the dissent be in many things folly. To imitate is to honor. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mimesis, Aristotle ca called it. You know, when it's mimetic. When you are miming, you know, really looking at someone, you're honoring them. That's why having the proper things before you is very important, right? You don't want people imitating, showing honor to something that is dishonorable, right? For it is vehemently to approve. Yes, exactly. So if you're imitating... You're vehemently approving something and you're honoring it. Think about that. That's a powerful statement. 
I'm gonna put another thing next to that. To imitate one's enemy is to dishonor. Okay, yeah. So, hmm. To imitate, I think of mockery when he says that, right? So if it's your enemy and you're like, I'm gonna act like you, you know, and you're doing it in a mocking way, maybe. To honor those, another honors is to honor him as a sign of approbation of his judgment. So yeah, you got to judge and you go to him and everyone's like, hello, your honor, hello, your honor. And then you say it, you know, hello, your honor. You're, you're agreeing with them and you're being very respectful and you're accepting that this person is the honorable judge and it's the custom, right? So you can see the many fold examples that he laid for us. To honor his enemies is to dishonor him. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, mm hmm yes. If you have an ally, and your ally is honoring your enemy, you're dishonoring the person who maybe you're more closer to in an alliance. To employ in counsel or in actions of difficulty is to honor, for sure, totally. If you tell someone to come on this council board, you've given them a great benefit, right? You've honored them in a way that others recognize. And if you seek their counsels in times of difficulty, you honor them. Right? Yeah, we can agree with that. As a sign of opinion of his wisdom or other power. Yes, so when you seek people's advice, it could be on many topics. It doesn't have to just be on one topic. So let's say someone could be an expert cheesemaker, but you ask them their opinion on, you know, what should I make for dinner tonight? You're, you're honoring them by giving an opinion, even if it's not relative to their specific specialization profession, right? So whenever you seek someone's counsel, you're saying that you have a high regard for their opinion, which you see as wisdom, right? Very important. To deny employment in the same cases to those that seek it is to dishonor. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one's a tough, a tough one. They may seek it, you deny them, they feel dishonored. But they may not have earned it and they may not be capable, right? So, yeah, they have to take it with their stride, though. All these ways of honoring, see like ways isn't W-A-Y-S, it's W-A-Y-E-S, <laughs> are natural and as well within as without commonwealths. But in commonwealths where he or they that have the supreme authority can make whatsoever they please to stand for signs of honor, there be other honors. So look at that. If you are the supreme authority in the commonwealth, you can set whatever standard you want for honoring. So, you, someone who is the supreme authority in Japan, he wants you to bow before you begin speaking, well, you better bow, right? That's the difficult thing that uh, I believe was an issue with ambassadors in the past, right? Some people be like, well, I don't want to bend the knee. I don't want to bow. Who are you? Right? It, there is a, something about that power play, though, of like, hmm, who should you send as an ambassador who doesn't mind bowing? Because if you send someone who's really strong, who has a high opinion in the people and he bows, it sends a bad message to your own people. So send someone else. So if they bow, it brings a sort of flattery to the one being bowed to, but not dishonor to the ones who you, you know, are waiting there watching what their ambassador does, right? I th here's a good example. So some U.S diplomats went to China and China did the anal swab on them and I was highly offended you know why would you do that to our politicians so they like oh this is the law everybody who wants to come here you have to get the anal swab if you're for to check for you know the play and it was a power exercise of humiliation because China is very good at the humiliation rituals what they do and if you're into politics, you can see, like, asking somebody's, not messengers, but they're important people, to do such a humiliating act, and then have it broadcasted to the world, it's, uh, you know, and then the people complained about it. You can check it out on Google. Uh, just type it in and you'll see it. And how that those people felt after, like, we went to this country, and then they want to put something in our butt, right? So think about how... And China was like, you have to obey us, you're honoring us. But they dishonored the one. And they're the sovereigns. And Xi Jinping, maybe he's not the sovereign like the same as Hobbes means it, but the one in authority and power. And he set the rules that his 
his minions, you know, carried out. You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing. You know, you got to be careful who you send and to what land. And you got to know what they got going on. I mean, freak you out, right? Because if you knew that ahead of time, you might not go. And I'd be like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> a sovereign doth honor a subject with whatever title or office or employment or action that he himself will have taken for a sign of his will to honor him. Yeah, so if the sovereign wants to honor a particular person with a title, position, or employment, or by doing a certain action, could be like forgiving a debt or something, uh, that'll be the sign that he has chosen for honor. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, we, we basically could see that. The king of Persia honored Mordecai when he appointed he should be conducted through the streets in the king's garment upon one of the king's horses with a crown on his head and the prince before him proclaiming so look at that that the king of persia someone came and he says well here this is how i want to honor you this is how i chose to honor you so wear my garment and ride one of my horses and put a crown upon your head and this is how i choose as the sovereign to honor you in a way that i like interesting thus shall it be done to him that the king will honor and yet another king of persia or the same another time to one that demanded for some great service to wear one of the king's robes gave him leave so to do so oh okay so hey i want to wear your robe all right let me wear it because that's a sign of honor yeah wearing the robe you could definitely see how that would be a power play that'd be an honor ceremony right but with this addition, that he should wear it as the king's fool. Oh, ha, ha. Oh. And then it was dishonor. Yeah, if you're dressing up as the, the court jester and then parading yourself with the streets. Yeah. Or you put the king's robe onto the court jester and then he bounces around and acts dumb. Now you've made it a mockery. Right? Oh, it's very interesting. What do you think, fam? You know? A lot of you know richness in here about what is honor because you ask someone they might have a very basic understanding but here it's like he's really laying out some complex things for us to speculate on right we think